Okay, I don't even know where to begin today and bear with me a little bit. Um, when I'm uploading this video, my phone's been really screwed up. My charger's fucked up. Um, lost power yesterday, so I had so much that I wanted to talk about initially and then all this shit just happened. Um, I feel very 90s nostalgia today with my little toggle toggle set. Anyway, so where do I even fucking start? So, um, Thursday when I got off work, I was hearing, I guess this was, would have been Thursday morning. So I was hearing rustling in the basement. Sounded like a wild animal had got in the basement. So I assume that's what it was. And I really don't, I've only ever seen, I like to call it the beaver that lives in the front yard because I just think it's funnier. It's a giant groundhog that I've seen in my front yard before. But I'm like, this doesn't, and he's huge. This sounded like something was tearing shit up in my basement, going through boxes and bags. Like it has to be a raccoon. It has to be a raccoon or a possum. So there was a trap down there. And normally I would only hear it during the night. And it, it was crying and whining. And it just sounded like it was trying to scratch its way out of somewhere. It was only in one particular spot. But it was on my last fucking nerve. So I ended up calling a like in all rescue place that's close to me and this was on Friday or third yeah Friday morning or Friday mid-afternoon before I had gone to work and they were like we can't get anybody out there our next appointment is Wednesday morning at nine o'clock I'm like okay well that thing's gonna be fucking dead by now now mind you I'm just hearing it physically never saw the fucker at this point physically never saw it um but there was a trap downstairs with like peanut butter and whatever never trapped it well okay at, it's just such so, so stupid after the point of light and this was like the ongoing joke for like two fucking days so after like two and a half days i can still hear this thing well i end up walking around my house and there's a giant hole in the ground like right by where i'm hearing it by my basement so i'm assuming nothing actually was in my basement i think it's like a groundhog hole that got fucked with and i think i was just hearing it because I have a window right here. So it was sounding like it was in my basement. Now I think I'm still going to keep the appointment on Wednesday just to make sure. I've been down in my basement since then to do laundry. But I'm just going to make sure. So I've been calling it the beaver in my basement. Which sounds like a really bad porn. But I've been calling it that for like the past two days. I told people at work. And it's just like okay. So that was the ordeal that I was dealing with for whatever. Haven't heard anything. Um didn't hear anything last night so I've only been in the base at once so I'm holding out hope that it's not actually down there that maybe you know I thought maybe it just got scared and hid but I looked everywhere in the basement like there's not anywhere that I could possibly have hidden so I'm thinking that that's just the case okay so now that we kind of got that out of the way I'm like okay maybe we have that dealt with ran to Walmart yesterday to get fuck I don't do you really have a uh, whatever you know a need to go to Walmart very very seldom do I have to and I knew that it was supposed to be storming for a while but it looked fine it was just kind of cloudy outside and for some reason I was just having a really bad day yesterday I had such fucking bad anxiety I was shaking all day it was bullshit but I felt good like right before I was getting ready to leave the house and then as soon as I left the house I'm like dread so get to Walmart and I'm trying to make it through the store and then it starts to rain and I can hear it on the roof and it kind of like calms me down I'm like okay like because like I've said before, I have really bad social anxiety and it's kind of to the point where, not to the point where, but um, one of those things you think you're gonna just going to pass out in the store and you think everybody's going to stare at you. So it might sound nuts, but I'm like, okay, it's raining outside. People love rain. White people love rain. Why, you know, everybody freak, freaks out about rain. I'm like, okay, cool. So if I happen to collapse in the store, nobody will notice because it's rain. It's just, it's really, it's really dumbass way to think. Anyway, so going to the store and as soon as I get to the other side, the lights start flickering really bad and I'm like, holy shit, how is it that bad outside that the lights are flickering that bad? Um, the power ended up completely going out in Walmart and of course it was packed. People start freaking out and I'm waiting for people to just like start panicking and running and grabbing their shit and running out the door. Well, um, magically you know how walmart always has like two employees like they're never at the registers anywhere magically all the employees came out from the back all of them there was like there's so many people that work at walmart you would never know it they came up and they were like hey um if you're gonna stay in the store everybody needs to go into the back where the warehouse part of electronics where the stock room is i'm like now i'm like really freaking out i'm having such a panic attack like my eyes are starting to go blurry 
like you're kind of not even noticing what you're looking at and they were like you can take your carts if you want to if the registers are going to be back up so I go all the way back to electronics and I'm waiting I'm sitting on the ground I'm texting my friend I'm trying to calm myself down because I'm like this is fucking great like this would just beautiful um and you can tell that it's hailing really bad so I keep checking my phone I didn't hear any tornado warnings but of course people are freaking out you know I think it's a tornado I'm like fuck all of you I'm like sitting in the bicycle aisle and this is all where it ends like I just wanted to come to the fucking Walmart to get some I needed some candles and a goddamn picture frame and a toilet seat and this is where they're gonna find me in the bicycle aisle with my um what are the banana nut bread candles a Clorox toilet seat I don't know why Clorox sells toilet seats and uh, some popcorn and skinny margarita mix. That's what I had to go to Target for. I didn't have to, but that's the only place that, you know, um, sells it. Anyway, so it'd be like, here she lies, toilet seats, skinny margarita mix, because apparently, I don't know. Anyway, um, but then they made people, you guys know I'm a fucking nut when I haven't done a video in a while. I apologize. I'm like, oh, everything is in the back of my head. Like, can't wait to get to the next subject. Anyway. They ended up telling people like, hey, everybody has to leave the store. The registers are down. They're not going to be back up. And even if they are back up, fuck off, basically. And I'm like, cool, I'd rather get out of here. But people are like screaming at the employees. They're like, you're sending us out in this. I felt like I was in the movie The Mist. And people were getting like banned from the grocery store. It was so funny. And they had like all the security at the front. The whole front of the store was flooded. Well, whenever we left, I saw what had happened. A giant power line had... Um, I don't know if it got struck by lightning what it was but it all the traffic lights were out and I literally started crying because there's a huge enormous four-way intersection at this area like most Walmarts are big you know shopping centers and people are dipshits when the lights are out they don't they don't give a fuck uh, where you have to be or following the rules they just want to go so I literally started crying because I just wanted to get the fuck out of there people are going when it's not their turn People are like going really fast and then having to like skirt on the brakes in the middle of the intersection because like, you know, so finally get out of that shit and I'm just like, holy shit. But of course, like I still, it wasn't just a skinny margarita mix and the toilet seat I needed to get. There was other stuff. So ended up having to restart and getting everything then. Um, so that's been that. I think those were the two big things. The, uh, the Walmart shelter story and the beaver which I still don't know. I don't know if there's a family of beavers because or it's really a groundhog, but I still see him in my backyard. He's just a funny little thing. I mean, I don't want to lose him. I don't want to trap him. I did trap a possum. A possum did get trapped in the trap, but he's just going to come back. I mean, it is what it is. You can't really do anything. They just don't need to burrow in my basement. So, um, hopefully the landlord's going to come back and end up fixing that or you know I can still have my appointment I just don't really know if I want the appointment because God knows how much that's going to cost for somebody just to do an estimate I don't know I'll, I'll update you on that later so in regards to the work story I wanted to get this video out because now that we've gotten all through that I know what I'm going to do 99.9% .9 of the time when it comes to this but I told you guys that I had uh, done with my other job put my two weeks and at this point I have two more shifts left so I had told my manager that the last time I talked to you guys and I went to work on that Wednesday, last Wednesday. It's Monday now, so yeah, last Wednesday. And I kind of had already figured everybody was going to know, even like the regulars and stuff, but I come in, I'm not just going to immediately announce it, I, I get to work. Maybe two hours into my shift, I'm talking to one of my regulars and one of the bartenders, her boyfriend was sitting at the bar. She's a little bit older. I've, I've, um, gotten very very close to this particular bartender and her I really just want to say her husband they've been together for like 12 years sweet as can be so about two hours into my shift after everything kind of calmed down I said I got some bad news for you guys I said next Friday is my last day and they both were like they were like no no don't say that please like you know whatever and I was like I'm really sorry like I just can't do it anymore or whatever so when I got to work that following Friday it was really slow Cinco de Mayo and most people aren't going to come do, like, they're going to go to Mexican restaurants and a Mexican bar to first and get a mile. Um, which is so fucked up. It's so fucked up that those, pl like, that those places just aren't closed. Like, no shit. That's where they're going to make all their money. But it's all these ridiculous fucking white people that are trying to speak Spanish. You know, like, oh, it's, it's the worst. Any Hoosier. I'm cleaning off a table and my coworker that, you know, probably my favorite coworker. I've worked with her for six years. Um, came up to me and... 
she was like so when's your last day I said next Friday and she's like oh so what are you planning on doing and I said oh I already have a different job like and to be fair I don't I'm closer to her but if whenever you quit a job I don't think you owe anybody an explanation there's really no I guess depending on what you want to provide what information you want to provide but I was just like I just can't do it anymore and I guys I told you guys a story about last Sunday that whole debacle and she had even said she's like you know last Sunday was absolute bullshit and I said you know what that that was like the last straw but that wasn't that's not why I'm done and I just, I don't like just sitting there and having to explain myself, especially when I know what's coming next. So basically she got teary eyed. She did. And I felt so fucking bad. She's like, can I just ask you if you would, she's like, because I know you really don't want to close anymore. Would you be willing to just keep your Friday and Sunday shift? It's Friday and every other Sunday. I'm like, first of all, what, what is even the point of that? One day a week and every, like, th that's literally nothing. That's even more, that's even more of a point of like, why should I stay for that tiny piece of shit? Like, no. And she's like, because I really, really just don't want to see you go. I don't want to see you go. And it was funny because whenever I had messaged my manager, like, he sure as fuck was pretty much just like, peace, bitch. Uh, good luck on your endeavors. Bye. You know, but other people, he's tried to, like, beg to stay. I'm like, I'm not. And it's, I'm not going to grow here. I'm so mentally done with this place. But when you're put on the spot like that, it's just really hard to just be like, no. Especially when somebody's, like, crying, asking you to stay. And I, I felt so bad for her, but it also pissed me the fuck off because I feel like at this point, I mean, I know that I'm pretty much a closed off person, but I feel like I'm, it's so hard for me to say no. It's hard, so hard for me, but I'm like, I cannot be put in the position to feel so bad that I'm going to stay. Like I cannot, I have to stop feeling that way and stop feeling like I have to please everybody because that's what I've been doing my whole fucking life. And I, I, as much, like, it's not like I'm never going to see these people again. And I know, like, it's a 50-50. It's probably somewhat selfish she wants me to stay because I am a good worker. And I'm one of the only people there that knows, you know, I've been there long enough. So I know how everything works. Um, and I know I, people will miss me. I mean, it's just, you, you connect with people, but I can't. I can't just stay there to please you. You know what I mean? Like, what, that's not going to happen. So I just feel really, really bad. But, and at this point, it's already about 7.30 at night. So I'm probably not going to text my manager. I'll probably text him tomorrow and just be straight up because I was pretty short with him. I mean, really, the only thing you should have to say to a man manager is I'm putting in my two weeks and that's it. But I don't want to leave this place with hard feelings because I do like most of the people that are there. So I think I'm just going to send him a message tomorrow and be like, hey, I know you talked to so-and-so, um... I don't want to end this on bad terms. You know, maybe maybe in the future, if you need possibly somebody to work a banquet, hey, maybe once in a while I'll do that. But it's not going to be like it is, you know. It, it can't. And I know I feel very bad. You know, blah, blah, blah. Like, again, I don't need an explanation, but I don't feel a need to end this job on bad terms. But that just kind of, like, broke my heart and pissed me off at the same time because I'm like, please don't put me in the position to, like, like, come on, just wish me the best and say goodbye. It's really not that big of a deal. Like, it's whatever. Um, so that was that. And then, I don't know what day it was, I had seen, now again, I've been staying very much out of the drama because I want no part of this shit, but I've just seen everybody left and right that is taking everybody to court, and I saw Gaining Ground's video just so happen. I really do, I do like when he uploads, but I don't watch whenever he talks about Monty because I don't have any idea who that is, and I don't keep up with Chantelle or anything like that anymore. But I guess he had done a video where he said that he was going to finally take Nix to court. And we'll see how that goes. Um, I guess he's not going to talk about it much, but I was just like... And again, I, I just haven't been inserting myself, but... If, if there was a need for anybody to do that, I would say that would be the one. And I'm curious to see what's going to come, because I think after he uploaded that video I don't think Ron's on Rumble anymore I think he deleted absolutely everything and if that doesn't tell you all you need to know then I'm not really sure but I'm gonna get off here I'm gonna message my friend back I've just been like I just ugh, I feel like I shouldn't be as stressed as I have been um but I'm just somebody that overthinks a million times a day like constantly constantly even just like sitting there putting my two weeks and I was pacing the house for 45 minutes like I was like, where do I feel the most comfortable to sit to send this message? Like, it's just so stupid. And then I, I, it's just me internally because now that I finally had the guts to finally send that message, 
and then my coworker does that, I'm like, ooh, because my last two days I have Wednesday and Friday. It's going to be hard enough for me because I am sad leaving that job. And I just don't want to be trying to do my job and then having somebody in my ear constantly asking me to. I just think that's so messed up. I've never once in my life at any of my jobs, and I've loved a lot of my coworkers, been like, I think every time somebody was going to quit, I'm like, oh, that sucks, but like, good for you. Like, that's good for you. Because especially if you're the same coworker that's bitching about the job, like, it's your prerogative to say that's totally fine. But please don't like beg and beg and beg and, you know, it'll be fine. Like, I'll, I'll see you, but I, I, I literally can't, I can't anymore. I need to fly, fly. And as much as I've been putting in job applications and stuff like that, I just think it'll be... It'll be a number one priority once I finally quit. Because like I said before, I'll, I will lay in bed for three hours filling out job applications. And you know how a lot of times now you have to do those like audio, not audio, but um, you go to the company site and you have to do all that crap. Like I get really, really into it, but then I get so discouraged because I'm like, well, what does it matter? I, I'm going to the shit job tomorrow. And, and another thing is whenever you work in the service industry and you fucking hate your job, you're not going to make money because I like at this point, people have just, they're so fucking rude like and I did have I, okay so I'm, I'm sick of like I'm not a piece of meat and I, do, I also don't like being objectified and I also don't like even talking that way because it sounds like I'm being so conceited but I don't it doesn't matter what you look like at this bar where I live it doesn't matter what you look like you're gonna get hit on period you know what I mean so it's not even any of that type of way but when you're a bartender that's kind of your job to flirt with people and be no like just don't don't speak to me in that manner because I'll fucking like I just won't talk to you and then, like, I had these two guys sitting at the bar. They were older, probably, like, I don't know. Every time I say older, I get, like, shit for it. I don't know. Um, maybe in their late 50s. I don't know. They look like, like, bikers a little bit. And they were nice or whatever. But then this guy, I'm, like, washing dishes. And he was, like, uh, weren't you flirting with me last time I was in here? And I was, like, ha, <laughs> Sure, yeah, whatever. Like, I, I'm so fucking bad at that. I'm like, dude, please just fucking leave me alone. Like, I got your drink. I got your food. Or please just leave me alone. Um, and then literally the entire hour that they were there, the entire hour that they were there, his friend was like, you're doing a really bad job at flirting. Oh, uh, honey, come here. Like, you think I'm into you yet? I'm, I'm... And then they were asking me to take shots with them. I'm like, I get it. That's literally, like, how it is to work at a bar. I'm just so fucking over it. Like, six years of that shit, I'm fucking done. I did have, it was a kind of a cute moment. Um, I was leaving on Friday and I was just not in it. And there was like this group of guys that had been sitting at the bar, very obnoxious, like very, very young, like freshly 21, you know? And uh, this one guy was there and he had been in there, I guess I've seen about three times now. Handsome young man, whatever. I sound old as a handsome young man, but I don't give a fuck. Um, so I'm getting ready to leave. I'm walking out, the, I'm like sprinting out the door. I'm sprinting out the door. And he, I can hear like running behind me and he like, he's like, excuse me, excuse me. He's like, can you please stop stop? And I was like, oh yeah, hey, what, like, what do you need? He's like, <sighs> and he puts out his hand. He's like, hi, my name's Miguel. I'm like, hi, my name's Katie. And he was like, are you single or you know, whatever. And I'm just like, no, like, I don't, you know, nothing like that. He's like, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then goes away. And I was like, no, that, that was very, very cute. But I just don't like, I'm just like, I just want to go home, be fat and eat my pasta and just like watch Game of Thrones. I don't want to. I'm just such a, I don't even want to say I'm an asshole. I just, I'm me. I can't help it. It reminded me of a time though that I thought was so cute. I was a little kid and we were in the drive through at Dairy Queen and there was a group of women sitting inside, women. They were probably like in their very early 20s. It was a group of girls sitting in Dairy Queen and I remember there was a group of guys outside but they were all in like uniform. I don't know if it was Navy or Army. I just remember like the camo pants. And I could tell one of them really liked a girl and I remember him running inside and I guess he stopped at a table to talk to her and she put up her hand like she had a ring on and did this and he was like oh like and he walked away and I remember my mom being like because I think my mom was being snoopy she wanted to see what would happen so we're all staring in the window and he my mom was like oh she's married like oh that was so cute because they all kind of went up and tried to like get her number for the guy or some shit. It was just really cute. And that's kind of what it reminded me of. Not really. Because I was just like, go away. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I would never do that unless you're really rude. But yeah, that's my point. Um, since there's been so many changes to the restaurant, most of my regulars are gone. 
a lot of them, I mean, some of them have still stayed for me, but I've even said, like, if, if this is so miserable for you, and it's not even that, like, the menus change, certain drinks have changed, like, that doesn't, you know what I mean? That doesn't keep people. So a lot, I'm just, like, not, I'm not making what I was at all. I'm, like, tan here and not because I want to match my neck to my body. Oh, I just want to get a spray tan so bad, but I'm scared I'm going to be allergic to it or something. I was going to do it today, but I fucking bitched out. But yeah, so that's what's been going on with me. I'm going to get off here because like I said, I'm trying to, you know, preserve my phone battery as much as I can because my charger's been fucked up. I'm hoping to fix that soon. But yeah, I'm going to get off here. I love you guys very much. This will probably take a while to upload, as I said. And we'll talk later.